The other thing is know, know the melody of the song, mm-hmm. be able to play the melody, know the words of the song, so you know what the song's about. Mm-hmm. So if it's like a really depressing blues song or something, you're not doing this as happy licks, you know? Right. It's just not gonna work. Um, know the chords of the, of the song, know what notes are in the chords of the song, and what notes that you can play that sound consonant with those chords and know the notes you could play that sound dissonant in a way that you like. Yeah. Not just randomly dissonant. You want the dissonance to be something that you're planning because dissonance only works when you resolve it. Right. You know? where, where does that come from? What, 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 do you, what do you think about when you're totally in an improvisational state? Well, uh, that's changed through the years, too. Um, I think of nothing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just try to become completely present. Uh, if you find that your mind is going off into realms of fantasy, like, I wonder what they're really thinking of me, or why is that guy playing so loud, or boy, I'm hungry, I can't wait till this is done so I can eat, I suck. You know, these are all kinds of like thoughts that can come up while you're playing. And, they all have nothing to do with the present moment. In your careers, it's the struggle that you describe, the search for something that's just out of reach that's so exciting for them and the audience. I have this, this theory that one of the things we like about Coltrane so much is that he just had all these ideas and this tiny little tube that he was trying to squeeze them through, and he just couldn't cram those ideas through it. And that's part of the excitement, is that the ideas were bigger than the instrument. You, know, you said you practice improvising. How do you, yeah. how, how, how do, you do that? Do you do well, what I, what I normally do is I'll take a 12-bar blues kind of cycle, and I'll just keep moving up in, in, in semitones, right? So I'm trying to get ideas going. I'm trying to do call and response, and, and I'm just trying to build a story, you know? And, you know, it, it's the best feeling that you can have. <laughs> Herbie Hancock said, you know, he was talking about playing with Miles, you know, and he said, you know, Miles would leave the stage, the band's playing, you know, and he said, you know, when things would get out of control, as they did sometimes, you know, things just sort of got out of hand, Miles would come in and with his playing, would pull everything together, and, and he says, and it's like being in the Garden of Eden or something. <laughs> so, I mean, it really is like the best feeling I've ever had, you know, personally. So there's two ways about improvisation. The first one I'm still working on. I'm still practicing and learning and finding things and finding ways. Uh, Joe Pass, of course, and, and Howard Roberts was a huge influence. But then there's the other things. The recording session where the guy says, hey, Don, come up with something. And I did the, you know, the uh, on Let's Get It On. I made that up at, at the moment, you know. Wow. And so <laughs> and then you get with Freddie Perrin comes in. And Louis Shelton. Do you know Louis Shelton? I assume uh, you do. I, I do, yeah. I've okay. never met Louis, but we've... we've uh, well, he's in Australia. He's in Australia, so yeah. Louis Shelton goes... It's an A-flat. Right. And my part was written, and it was... And David T. Walker goes... He goes... And then I went... you back so sometimes you're reading sometimes you're making it up mm-hmm. sometimes it's a little of both 